Good morning everyone, Glenda Mollett here and we're stamping in my craft room this morning. Uh, we're going to make this Beautiful World W Fold card. This is another one of the cards for my Beautiful World Fun Fold card class that you can take either in person or virtually or get the kit and make them at home. You, um, ev All of the people that qualify will be getting these videos for free. So this is a W fold card, so it opens up and all the wow happens on the inside. The outside is really pretty, but the inside, that's where it is. And then I put a piece on the back so you can write your sentiment. Um, this one, I didn't have the cinnamon cider um, ink pad when I stamped this, but this is in crumb cake and I'm going to be stamping it in cinnamon cider today. So we'll get on with what the kit is. So the kit consists of an envelope, of course, a card base. Oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of pieces to this one. A card base that's eleven by four and a quarter, and that's scored at five and a half. And then the mechanism piece that's thick whisper white. The mechanism piece is also whisper white, thick whisper white. It's eleven by one and three quarters. And then it's scored at two and three quarters, five and a half, and eight and a quarter. <coughs> Pardon me. So take the inside pieces to the side. I need a piece of um, cinnamon cider for the outside that is five and a quarter by four. And from this, I'm going to die cut this piece with the stitch rectangle dies. Then we have a piece of Whisper White that's two and a quarter by three and a half and we're going to emboss that one. And a piece of Whisper White that's four by four and a quarter and that's going to do the sentiment and the inkwell and pen and the world. Then we have, um, let's see. The piece of cinnamon cider that we're going to cut out of this piece will layer on with the piece that we emboss. And then for the inside, we need two pieces of um, early espresso that's five and a quarter by four. And we need, oh, I forgot the designer paper on the front. There's the, oh, look, I cut it wrong. Uh oh, I guess I'll be going back and cutting a new one. Oh dear. Okay, so it's five and a quarter by four anyways for the front. So for the inside, you need two pieces that of designer paper that are, hang on, hang on, five and an eighth by three and seven eighths, and they layer onto the early espresso piece. And then you need four pieces of cinnamon cider that are two and an eighth by three, four pieces of whisper white that are two by two and seven eighths, and a piece of brass that's two by six to die cut the worlds. And then a five and a quarter by four inch piece of whisper white for the back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to have to do is get my designer paper out and cut that properly. Because apparently I cut it for a hot dog card when it's a, it's a, um, the other kind of card, hamburger card. Oh, look. There's one. Yay. I'll just have to trim that down a bit. It's a bit wide. Okay. I can't tell you how much I love this designer paper. It's got the brass accents in it. So excuse me for one moment. I'm just going to go and cut this to five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And I have that behind me. My cutter. So that's three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Good. Got it. Okay. Great to go now. Um, on the front, we're going to take the piece of cinnamon cider and we're going to get out the stitched rectangle. I'm wondering, can you see that good? I guess you can. It's kind of, It sticks up a bit on this side because of all the mechanism on the inside. Okay, so I'm using um, the stitched rectangle dies and you need, where are, there, we need number three. One, two, three. And we need number four and we need B. So I count these ones as B, A, B. 
there we go. So those are the three we need. We'll put that out of the way. So the one on the front is this one. So I'm just, oh no, it's not. It's this one. I'm going to die cut that out of this piece of cinnamon cider, right? Right in the very center-ish. And remember when you're putting, when you're putting your um, die through your embossing machine and you have a die with a flat end on it, you want to just twist your cardstock or your die so that it hits on a corner and doesn't have to go point and then up and over because sometimes you don't get a good cut when your die is that way. So all you have to do is just twist your cardstock a bit to make it go in there on an angle instead of straight. Okay, so there we go. There's that and that. Put my die up there because we don't need that one anymore. Now I can attach my designer paper with my stamp and seal. This is the new adhesive from Stamping Up, and I now I will have some in stock because we're allowed to cash and carry adhesives. So I'd love it if you gave it a try. Oops. Uh oh. Yeah, it sticks like the devil, but apparently it comes up again. You just have to be careful with it, not pull too hard. Yeah. There we go. I'm on. Oh, yes, it sticks like the devil for sure. I'm just lining this up here. There we go. Now, last time I made a card, I forgot to put the ribbon on. I didn't cut the ribbon, so this is the faux suede trim. And I need seven inches of that. So get me out my ribbon scissors. And I use my grid sheet to measure. You probably can't see this because it's out of... I'll just move this up a bit for now. So I put it to seven and then I go down here and give it a trim. That way I'm not worried about having to have rulers on hand and all sorts of funky stuff. You can just use your grid paper. Okay, I dropped my plastic and I need it. So when you open your ribbons, do you save the plastic and reuse it? I find it's nice because it stops your ribbon from unraveling and it keeps it clean. So I, when I get it off, I just put a little bit of double-sided adhesive there and fold that over to make, make it easier to grab. And I just store it like that. And then it's clean. And we need one of the slides. So I'll get those out and we need a couple of the corners too. So I'll get them out at the same time. These are the antique corners and slides and they go really well with this sweet because it's got an antique -y flavor to it. So this just slides on here like this. And this faux, trim, faux suede trim is the perfect size. It will fit other, um, other ribbons as well. So then you just put it over where you want it. And these are nice because once you get them onto your card, you can move them if you want. Okay, we're going to put, I'm going to use some different tape for this because I find that that, um, stamp and seal is just so sticky when I put it down it sticks to my paper so I want it let's see right about there you want it up far enough that you're sent you're going to have room for your sentiment and then I turn it over and I use my grid paper to line it up so I stick the cardstock flat on a line stick this up against the one at eight inches because that's where the heavy line is and then you can just move this one till it hits that eight inch piece or that eight inch mark and fold it back and you're going to have it will be straight all the time. Now we can now put that right onto our cardstock. 
or our card base, I mean. I didn't get that right in the corner and I want to. There we go. And it's the same as any other adhesive. If you go past the edge, just roll it back a bit. Okay, card base is right here. And we'll just put that right on there. There we are. Okay, so we've got that. I'll just put that to the side for a sec. We've got this piece. And now we need to take the coordinating the piece that layers with it. And it's going to get cut with this stitched rectangle die. And then we're going to run it through the... Um, old world paper embossing folder and when you're die cutting and embossing on the same piece of paper always do your die cut first because when you do the embossing first and then the die cut then you can flatten your embossing but if you die cut first and then emboss you don't have that issue okay so I'm just going to run that through my machine and there's no stamping on this if I wanted to stamp something um, like the inkwell, if I wanted the inkwell to be right on the paper instead of a separate piece, then I would do that now before I emboss it. But I, I don't want that because I want, I want, um, I want the, to be able to put the corner of that pen right down in there. So now I'm going to run this through with the old world paper embossing folder switch plates here and put that through. This is a really wonderful embossing folder because it, oh, I did it upside down. Oh, well, I guess we're going to have it the other way. I wanted it to be sticking up, not sticking down. So this is the deboss side. And this is the emboss side and there's definitely a difference. So I used the embossed side here. So maybe it's a good thing that I have the other side. And that's just going to layer here like this. So we'll just get some adhesive on that. Yep. There we go. And then this gets centered on here. And then we're going to put the two brass corners on. And to do that, you just need glue dots. These work really well with the antique corners and slides. Oops, time to tighten up my, my piece of string here. So do you do this with your um, glue dots? Run a piece of ribbon or twine or something on it so that it doesn't unroll the whole thing? Sorry, there. I'm just tying a bow so that I can move it again. And then you just peel it back and it runs as, as you take the um, glue dots off. So there's one. And there's two. And these fit really good on these um, glue dots. It's just the right size. Okay. Now I'll just tear my end off and put it back in the box and it's not going to unravel anymore. A couple of tips for you today. I like including tips in my videos. Okay, so we need one at the top and I'm going to put them right um, flush with the edge of that piece of cinnamon cider. Just like that. Okay. Whoops. And this one is just sticking over a bit. I'm just going to tuck that under. Line that one up. There we go. Now this whole thing is up on dimensionals. We'll just cut a few dimensional strip pieces.
and put them on here like this. And you want to make sure that you have enough on there that you're not going to have a, a collapsing middle or somewhere on the side. I've discovered that you can't you can't be chintzy with the um, dimensionals. So otherwise you'll have you'll have things collapsing and you don't want that. Okay, so that's going to go onto the card base this way, like that. Maybe move it over a bit. I'm not going to attach it yet till we have the world and everything on there. So let's put that off to the side and we're going to die cut one of the world stands out of, this is one of the inside pieces, so I'm just going to die cut that. Out of the center of that piece. Alright. Man, I like how these dies cuts fall out of the dies. So nothing better than the ease of those. Okay, so there's that part. I'll put that back. We need to stamp and die cut the world, and that's what this is for. So I used the R half of the world on the first one, and I'm going to use the other half of the world on the second one. I'm going to stamp that in early espresso. And then there's a circular die to cut that out with. There we go. Now we'll stamp the ink well at the same time. There is a die for that as well. And find my piece of Whisper White for the sentiment. Oh, okay. I forgot. The sentiment is cut with the it's out of this one as well yep I know so you want an even oops that's the wrong saying let's get the right one out because it's not going to we could use that one except that um, it won't fit in the die that I have out for it so I'm just going to stick this off to the side so I don't get ink everywhere because it's inked up Okay, so when I stamp this, I'm going to want it over to the side a bit to leave enough room for the whole die cut because it gets tucked underneath. Okay, and I'm going to close that for now and get out the cinnamon cider. And we're going to stamp feather pen whatever quill is it a quill pen I don't I don't know there we go now we will bring in magnetic platform and get our pieces die cut here there's the circle for that one this one is probably going to need a little persuasion to stay where it's supposed to be. Then the pen. Oh, it's cooperating today. I'm so excited. Let's see if this one's going to cooperate. Okay, now I want the straight. There we go. And I'm not worried about this side because that gets tucked underneath the, the other piece anyways. Okay, we'll just gently put the lid on and run it through the die cutting machine. Oh, I'm so excited that the new die cutting machines are going to be available soon. As my big shot, I think it's on its last legs. I wonder how many um, die cuts that big shot has done over the years. 
because this is my original one. I got it back in 2008. Okay, die over there. Die on here. And this die on here. When you put your dies on, if you put them on upside down so that the cutting surface is up, then you have a better stickability. There you go. How do you like that for a word? Stickability. All right, so we're going to put some Tombow. Let's see if this is going to cooperate today. I'm going to put some Tombow on here. Little tiny dots of Tombow. And I'm just going to let that dry a bit. I'll put that off to the side, bring my piece back in. And we're going to put, I find the, uh, the stamp and seal is a little difficult to use on such a small object. <laughs> so I'm going to put the, the ink well on here and then we'll put some t adhesive on here. And it's just going to tuck down underneath. So I'm just lifting that a bit. Let's lift it a bit more. Get that down in there. I don't want it to fall off. There we are. And then it just sits like that. Okay. Now adventure awaits. Goes. Sometimes this takes a little persuasion to get going, but it's worth it. Where did that come from? That was yesterday's project. Okay, so now this is going to go right down on here like this. Right underneath that ribbon slide. And make sure it's straight. There we go. Now we can put, we can put this on here like this. And it's going to go right over the end of that. So let's get the... Now, I put I put a dimensional there, but I don't think I can have it there because of the ribbon. So I'm just going to move it down a bit. Leave room for the ribbon to slide in between the dimensionals. I don't like putting dimensionals on top of my ribbon. And I don't like gluing my ribbon down because I... Don't want it to look unnatural and sometimes when you do either one of those your ribbon tends to lay unnaturally on your card and if you just do the trick i showed you with adhesive on the back and attach your ribbon just on the back then it'll it allows it to sit where it wants okay i'm going to stick this on here now make sure it's straight there we go and now we'll put the the stand onto the world. Like that. And we need a little bit of Tombow on the base stem part. And it's going to hang off the edge here so you can put a little tiny strip of dimensional on that if you want let's see if I can get one small enough you don't want it to be up there too far you just want it to be right at the very bottom and then we'll put some adhesive on this side of the world because this side of the world is going to be off the edge of your card front or that layer of card so I'm just going to put adhesive on part of it here okay take the liner off the dimensional and we'll put the put it right onto here now I'm going down until I feel the dimensional fall off the bottom of the card stock and then we'll just put this right there there we are and there's our, there's our, oh, our world's a little on the crooked side. Oops. I wonder if I can get that up and move it. It looks like it's 
tipping on its axis a little bit too much. Come on. Gentle, 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 gentle. I have to keep telling myself, don't pull it tight. Let's see if I can straighten it out a bit without completely destroying it. I don't know. I don't know. I might be able to do it. Let's take this off. I might have to just do a new one. Because this is going to have glue on it. So let's get it on there. Okay, straight this time. There we go. Done. Okay, so now we have the inside to work on. So that's going over to the side and this is the inside. So we have designer paper to put onto our early espresso. We have two pieces. So there's one. It just goes right onto here like this. There's one. And the second one. So if anybody wants to give this adhesive a try, just let me know. You're welcome to come over and play with it for a bit. It replaces the snail. I would never recommend the snail to my customers. And I would tell them about it before I gave it to them because it used to dry up. And I'm hoping that they've solved the issue. They said they did. They said they solved that issue with this stuff. So We'll see. Okay, there's one ready to put on the inside. And this one will get ready. And this has to go down first before you um, put the mechanism in. That's why I'm doing it now, so I don't forget. All right, card base, please. And we'll put that on here. Oops, okay, let me get it up so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to center this in here. And lay it on like that. And then we'll do the same thing for this one. And try to get them even at the top and the bottom. Oh, that's crooked. Oh, man. Oh, man. I really, really, really like the fact that you can do this with this stamp and seal. You have to be very gentle with it, but it comes up. It's wonderful. You just, the whole time I'm doing it, I'm saying, come on, come on, just lift up, come on. Just a little bit of lift. And look how it's coming up. Oh, I'm so excited. Because I like, I like cardstock that, or adhesive that allows you to do that. There we go. On. Okay, now, get that out of the way. We need to die cut some worlds. And I want to put some adhesive sheets on here first. Find my scissors. And we're just going to cut it right about there. So you just take off the um, liner from the that has the words on it. Don't touch that part because it will. That's the adhesive, and it will come off. And then just put lay it down like that and pull the backing off. See how easy that is. Then I save little pieces like this because you never know when you're going to want a little teeny tiny piece. 
Now this one where it says peel here, this is the edge. So you can just peel off that little strip. And then it's easy to peel this off. Okay, now we can cut our worlds. We need three. So I used two of this one and one of that one because there is two dies. There's two world dies. So we'll just get them on here like this. And I'll run these two through and then I'll put one through to do the third one. Crunch. Okay, this one fell out. So I'm just going to put that one back in. They both both fell out apparently. There we go. Alright, one more. Oh, and then I was supposed to die cut. Oh, Lord. I thought I was being so smart. I forgot to die cut the, the stands. Bef the stands are stamped and die cut before um, I put this one on. Darn. I was being, I was so happy with myself that I had remembered. Guess I didn't. That's okay. I'll just go and grab a piece of early espresso. And I'll put some extra into your kits for you. Just in case you decide to follow my instructions. I'm just get, trying to get all the little brass pieces off my finger. There we go. Okay. So those are ready, all three of them. And now, early espresso, because I was also supposed to die cut three circles. So I'm going to have to make sure that I add that onto the instructions sheet, or the recipe, so I remember when I give you your kits that you need extra. So I need to cut out three circles and I need to cut out three bases. So I'm going to do the circles first because then I'll, I'll know um, where to stamp and die cut the bottoms because they're stamped first. So this might take a minute or two. One. And two. Then I just have one circle left to do. There's one. There's two. And come on, stay still. You're not cooperating. Thank you. what I was doing. I was reading my instructions to see. Oh, I do have I do have it on there. I just didn't do it. Okay, so I'm putting the circle away. There's my three circles to go behind the three worlds. Now, we need the ink. Not this one. We need the stamp that I didn't get out. The stand. We need the stamp. There we are. Now I'll just take that off of there, put this on here, and I'm just going to stamp them in early espresso. You don't have to do this part. You can um, you can do it the stands without stamping. But the stamp is in the in the stamp set, so I might as well use it. There we go. 
Now I'm going to get a piece of washi tape because this one does kai all over the place. I wonder if I... I'm going to check the back of my die set to see if I have the... No, I see I don't have a template for this, so I'm going to have to keep one of these just so I have a, a template. I'm just going to make that stay right there. And we'll die cut that one. There's one. And we'll do this one. And run that one through the die cutting machine. See, when I do these videos, I could have all this, oops, all this stuff prepared, but then you wouldn't be able to see how I do it. So that's why I don't prep anything other than the cutting of the cardstock and stuff. Because if you're trying to do this along with me, this gives you a chance to get yours done too. Now I have to take that plate up. Oh, on the floor. Oh, what else is down here? A dimensional package. This afternoon I have to vacuum in my craft room. Well, I don't actually vacuum my vacuum vacuums. I'm just going to keep this and put it in the back of my where my dies are so that I have it as a template for the next time. Okay, just let me take my sweater off. Yay! Finally warmed up. Okay, dies back onto the dies. Oops, take the t washi tape off. <laughs> yep, that's how things get lost in my world. Alright, so we're ready to go. Let's get the four white pieces. There we are. Now the worlds have to go on their circles. Get them a... I should probably have my thingy sheet down here, my foam. But most of, see, most of them come off when you take the plastic off. And the ones that don't, just do this with your fingers. And then they come off. The only thing is that then you have to take them off your fingers, so. But it's just, it's an easy way to do it, to get them off. And then that just goes right onto one of these round circles like that. Now we'll do the second one. Now if I burnish this, I wonder if they would stick better to the backing as I pull it off. Let's let's experiment. Sure now I can't get the backing off. There we go. Well that one apparently is where the two pieces intersected. It's all right. There we go. Just a few little fussy things to deal with. I think my finger's getting too full. I'm going to have to use a different finger. Try to get some off. There we go. Oh. There's a little one there. Come on. And that'll go on to its brown circle, early espresso circle. Oops, except it's not centered. I like these adhesive sheets because they come up too. And then when you, when you mess up like I do, you can reposition. There we go, there's two of them. So I'm going to get these little pieces off of my fingers. There's not many left. Not that I don't like little sparkly bits all over my fingers, but it's 
annoying when you're trying to work. Okay, and we got one more to do. And we'll just put that one onto its circle. All right, little piece is coming off. Now I have to be serious about getting them all off. Even the itty bitty one. Because otherwise, they just get in my way. Whoops underneath my fingernail. One left. Look, look at that. How annoying is that? Then it gets under my nail. There we go. Got it. Okay. There's our three worlds and there's our three stands. So all we're going to do, so one of them we have to stamp. So I'm going to put that off to the side. So you can either put the world on first or the stands on first. It doesn't matter which way you go. And I'm just putting my adhesive on the back here. And then make sure your world goes on the right way though. I have one stuck to me. And the last one. Just like that. Okay, now put a little bit of double sided tape on here and then hit the top with Tombow. Now you could, I could have put adhesive sheets on there and I probably should have, but it's too late now. It would have made these a little bit easier to stick. There we are. these up and I'm going to use my scissors because sometimes I find it's easier to get them where I want when my big fingers are not in the way. So I'm just tucking that right up against the world. There we go. There's one. And there's two. And the third one. Oops, come on. Okay, those three. Now this one needs some stamping. So I get out my early espresso and you make the world a better place. And this. Okay. And this one has a north and a south, west, east. There we go. Okay. I'm going to ink this up in early espresso and put that kind of in the middle-ish. Now you could go all out and put... Um, do sponging and stuff, but I'm not going to on this one. Now, this is done in crumb cake, remember, and this one I'm doing in um, cinnamon cider because that's to match the colors of the cardstock. Okay, and then the back one has some of these as well, and then I've used a marker to go around the outside. So we'll just move this off to the side. 
my dirty paper out. Because I always like going partially off the cardstock when I do this. I don't know why. It just makes my heart happy. Okay, and the envelope. And you know, you have to do stuff that makes your heart happy sometimes. There we go. And I didn't do an envelope for this one, so I'm just going to do that now. Where did I put the envelope? Uh oh. Oh, it's on the floor. Yikes. Oh, go down. It's coming up. So I'm going to do the envelope while I'm at it. And then, before I put this all together, I'm going to put... See, there's nowhere to put your handmade by. So I'm going to put it on this. So the inside piece is going to go like this. These two glue down and then these two poke up. So I'm just going to put it my Hi, this was made by me stamp on the inside here. Just in case I want to um, sell it because legally I have to have the copyright that on there to sell the stamp the cards and I never know what I'm going to do with my cards so that's why I always stamp them okay so that's that's done that's the inside these are the pieces and we need the four pieces of cinnamon cider now and we'll just layer the whisper whites on to the cinnamon ciders Like this. One. I guess I can get rid of this dirty paper now. Sorry. I don't need to be seeing all that book. And then when I was doing a card the other day, I got a little carried away, and I'm hoping that that's not on. There's a big green blotch down there, and I'm hoping that that's not on camera, because that becomes annoying. Two. And three. And the fourth one. And just layer that onto the cinnamon cider right in here. Okay, now these have these get put onto here. So I'm going to stick them on here and do kind of, this is just a test because I have to mark them where I want the adhesive to go. So I'm going to lay them on here with backs facing up, line it up straight, and then I can line these up straight and pencil, put a little pencil mark. Now this one Gets lined up, pencil mark, and that one next, and then this one. Just so I know where to put the adhesive. There we go. Well, I think I'll use the Stamp and Seal Plus for this because I can. This stuff is really cool. It comes out in in little little pieces. See like that. I don't think this would pull up. I think this one when this one's down it's down. It 
it um, it's super sticky. It's like the old fast fuse. Okay, now I'm going to erase the pencil marks. I need a new eraser in my eraser. Where's my other one? It's not as pretty because it's not pink. <laughs> right. And the last one. Not that they'll show. You won't be able to tell them they're there, but I'll know. Okay, so I'll get these out of the way. Now, I did two of those and I did one of these. So these need to go on the outside. Oh, yes. You have to put these on before you put it in your card because otherwise it's, it's difficult to... Uh, to figure out. Now I lay this on here to make sure it's straight and then use my grid paper to line it up. That one's going to go over here. And this one will go in the middle. And then we just have the last one to do. Once again, lining it up so things are all straight. Oops. Upside down wouldn't be a good thing. There we go. Now, just flip it over. Make sure you don't have any adhesive showing. And I have a little bit there. So I'm just going to, I have an adhesive eraser. I'm just going to take that off. Or you can use a um, embossing buddy. Because if you don't deal with that now, you close your card, it's going to stay closed. There we go. Okay, now we need to put adhesive on these two pieces. sure that there's adhesive right on the edges. There we go. Now you fold this up. Oops. Fold this up like this and get your card. And then you want to put this so that it's even straight but you don't want it hanging out past the edge of your card so about a quarter of an inch in like that and then just close with it still folded up like that just close your card and then give it a good push so they both seal and then when you open it up there you go and then you can just reinforce that adhesive there there we are look at that How's that for a mechanism and a half, eh? Okay, so now the in, the back part, I went around the outside with early espresso um, marker. So I will just get that out because I didn't want to sponge. If you sponge, if you like sponging, then go for it. quickly put that on there like that and now we'll get the adhesive make sure the card's up the right way. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be funny? Put the whole thing on upside down. Here we are. And there's our card. Pretty cool, eh? I love these W fold cards. They're really fun to play with. 
There we go. So now I'm going to take the envelope and I'm going to take the old world embossing folder and I'm going to line it up with the edge of the envelope and I'm just going to emboss this. This to show you um, you can make your envelopes a little bit prettier by using an embossing folder on them. You just kind of have to be careful when you put it through the machine that you don't wrinkle your your envelope. You have it lined up in there. There, see? Isn't that cool? That just gives a little bit more texture to your uh, your envelope. All right, so there it is. There's the one of the cards for my beautiful World Fun Fold class for July. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for attending the class or purchasing the bundle. I appreciate you coming to stamp with me and I appreciate your orderings from me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Stamp and smiles and bye for now.